A couple of weeks ago I received this rather big package which contained a $600 electric skateboard, the so-called co-wheel. And despite its low price in comparison to other more popular electric skateboards, its manual promises surprisingly good values concerning the battery range and the speed. So in this video let's take this board for a spin, collect GPS data, have a closer look at its insights and finally evaluate whether it is worth the money. Let's get started. First off, I have to say that the board itself, the remote control, the battery charger and the battery pack itself were all well packaged. And even though I'm not an expert when it comes to skateboards, I would say that the board's quality is pretty decent as well. What I really appreciate though is the aluminum made battery holder in combination with the elastic board mount material and the cushioned inside of it. That is definitely a safe place for the already rugged looking 154 watt hour battery pack. Next, we got another nice looking aluminum enclosure with an elastic board mount close to the wheels, which houses the main electronics. Since there's not much to say about its power button and charging port, we can go ahead and push the battery in its compartment and then afterwards lock it in place. Now the power button blinks after pushing it and we can have a look at the remotes, which is in my opinion the biggest weak point of the system. For one, it looks and feels unimpressive in comparison to the rest, also the speed potentiometer wears out quickly and the charging takes forever, but more about that later. For now we can use it to let the hub drives of the board rotate clockwise and anti-clockwise, which as you can see works just fine. And using hub drives instead of a more classical gear system really makes the board look very clean, which I definitely prefer. The last noticeable feature of the board are the four indicator LEDs on top, which tell you how far the battery is discharged. But enough talk for now, let's charge up the battery pack and the remote control and let's give it a test ride. After around 30 minutes on the board, it was clear that it is a ton of fun to ride, but it can also accelerate and brake very quickly, which makes it a bit dangerous if you're careless or just getting used to it. But still the mostly positive experience continued up to one and a half hour after the beginning of the test ride, because the remote control started to act up and didn't want it to work properly anymore. The reason for that can be found by opening the remote, unsoldering one battery wire and placing a multimeter in between to measure the charging current, which is apparently only around 50 milliamps. That means instead of the 30 minutes of charging, it would require around 6 hours for one complete charge, which is bullshit. But other than that, the PCB of the remote looks decent and does its job just fine. Now because of the remote, we could not drain the battery completely and thus only rode 12 km with a top speed of 26 km per hour. That is not quite the promised 40 km per hour, even though I unlocked the fast mode beforehand by pressing the power button 6 times. So let's charge the two batteries up once again and let's go for another ride. This time I consistently try to use full speeds while not trying to use the brake at all. After around 45 minutes though, while reaching the last two indicator LEDs, the board became noticeably slower and almost useless because jogging alongside it would have been faster. But nevertheless, I drained the battery completely down to one LED light and thus reached a total distance of 14 km and a maximum speed of 25 km per hour. Not quite what the manual says, but since the ambient temperature was below 0 degrees Celsius, I would say a maximum battery range of 20 km is possible. Last but not least, let's have a look inside the battery pack and the main electronics compartment. After removing the screws of the battery pack, some more easily than others, the batteries along with the electronics slid right out of the case. After removing the protective tape of the batteries and the electronics, I realized that the utilized batteries are ICR 18650-22P with a capacity of 2150 mAh each. 
we got two of them in parallel and ten of those packs in series. So a total voltage of 36.2 volts and a capacity of 4300 mAh. The utilized battery management system also looks suitable with its balanced connectors and even features an over temperature protection. All in all, I was pleasantly surprised how well the battery pack was made. Even while measuring its output current with my oscilloscope, while straining the motors, the current never exceeded the rated current output limit of the batteries and even charges them up through regenerative braking, which is awesome. The only negative aspect is that the charger uses a constant current method set to a current limit of 1.5 amps, which means charging the pack requires around 3 hours and not 2. At the end I removed the mounting nuts for the aluminum closure and had a quick glance at the main electronics. Apparently the utilized brushless DC motors contain Hall effect positioning sensors, which explains why they work so well even at low speeds. The rest of the PCB also left a positive impression and before I do something stupid here and destroy the electronics accidentally, let's close the doll up and come to a verdict. Do I like the board? Definitely. For $600 you get an elegant looking, fast and fun to ride means of transportation that does not need to hide behind the far from reality boosted values of its manual. They are definitely good enough for this price segment. And if you want a longer battery range, you can simply get a spare one, since they are easily swappable. And with that being said, you know all the important facts about the co-wheel. I hope you enjoyed hearing my opinion. If so, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative and I will see you next time.